Welcome to the Patriot Training YouTube channel. My name is Clay Howell. I am the owner and head firearms instructor at Patriot Training. The topic for this video is going to be Q&A with the coach. A few weeks back, I performed a Q&A live session online for Patriot Training subscribers, students, and the general public and I fielded several questions and we are going to go over those in this video along with the answers that I gave. Subscribers were urged to submit questions ahead of time and we had several submitted and we did not really have any on the spot questions that uh, were not already addressed in the material. So we will go over those few questions we had and leave this for you guys in a YouTube format. The first question was why do you hate steel cased ammo? And this question stems from multiple times when we teach a rifle class. I have a warning on the website and I strongly urge people that when you're using an AR-15 do not use steel cased ammunition. It is less reliable by far and many times that steel cased ammunition is also underpowered it's not launching the bullet at velocities that we normally associate with your typical AR-15 round uh, several brands have been chronographed 300 400 500 feet per second slower than others so um, that's what happens when you try to save a buck. That steel cased ammo will come back and bite you. So why do I hate steel cased ammo? Well, it's less effective. It jams your guns a lot. And what will happen is somebody will say, well, I've used it plenty and I've never had a jam. And I talked about that in a previous video that what happens is these people, they go to the range, they have a box of 20 rounds and they get to the range and they take out their AR and they stuff their magazine. They realize, they look around, notice that there's nobody else there. They load their AR, they shoot two or three shots. Bleh, the steel cased ammunition jams the gun. They look around, they double check, make sure nobody saw it. And then they uh, clear up the jam and then they shoot it a few more times. And bleh, it, it has another hiccup. And wash rinse repeat until they've fired all 20 rounds or as many of them as they can and then they wrap up and go home and because nobody saw it i guess they figured that that malfunction doesn't count so invariably what happens on the line when we have a class is oh i've never had trouble with steel cased ammo and rarely do we get past a 12 or 15 round zeroing session before we have the steel cased ammo guys already having to fix hiccups never done that before yeah right buddy i see through ya <laughs> but uh no so i don't hate steel cased ammo you're going to hate having to clear it up in a class um yeah the next question is what tourniquets does patriot training recommend and before filming this I made sure to double check with Terry Couts, critical care paramedic and head medical instructor for Patriot Training, and he doubled and uh, double checked with me and, and verified that the two main tourniquets he recommends are the CAT Generation 7 tourniquet and the SAM XT tourniquet. And that's what I carry on me. That's what we have in the range bag for Patriot Training events and that's what Terry uses every day to help save lives so the next question is a good one with your AR-15 magazines 30 rounds in the magazine or 28 and why and this is a really good question because some schools tell you to stuff your AR-15 magazines with 28 rounds and some tell you to stuff it with 30. Why is that? Well if you're doing a tactical reload and you put a magazine in on a closed bolt and if you have let's say for example 
a Magpul style magazine. In the heat of the moment in stuffing your magazine, you may have accidentally put 31 rounds in that magazine and it will not go into battery. It will you cannot lock that magazine into place because of that extra round. There's a little bit of give still with 30 rounds. So I have a rule of thumb if you take Urban Rifleman or American Rifleman or Expert Rifleman, one of the ones where we teach that, my rule of thumb is if you tactically reload a magazine and then you go to shoot and that magazine falls out for the rest of the class you must load your magazine then strip two rounds off the top because you can't count and to be fair counting to 30 can be difficult for some people and it's easy to lose count especially if you're talking with somebody or something like that so a good reminder would be to look at a stuffed magazine with 30 rounds that you have set aside exactly 30 rounds to stuff in this magazine and realize that in a Magpul style magazine and most GI style magazines the top round number 30 the top round will be on the starboard side on the right side as you face forward and so if you have a magazine and it's chock full and it's got one on the top left well then you've probably overstuffed your magazine and that tactical reload is going to uh, fail on you. So I don't recommend 30 or 28. I recommend loading as many as you safely can, which should be 30, but if you can't keep track, if you can't take an extra second to make sure there's a, a quarter of an inch of give, if, if you are so oblivious to paying attention to detail that you can't do that, then what I tell you to do in the class is stuff it all the way full, then take two rounds off the top so you don't have any more troubles. And that tends to correct the problem. And, and the person who hears that and feels a little bit of uh, embarrassment at having to be chided about that, well, now that person is going to remember always and forever to double check and make sure that the top round is on the starboard side of the magazine, make sure there's a quarter of an inch of give, and, and go from there. So uh, I prefer 30. And... You know, the magazine holds 30. You might as well load it with 30. And that's why. On to the next topic. And quite possibly one of the most common questions I get. This might be the most common. Why do you hate Serpa holsters? Why do you not allow them in your classes? And that's a really good question, my friends. And the reason it's a really good question is Patriot Training is not the only firearm school that bans the Serpa holster. Many of them do. And the reason why is because they are hot garbage. The Serpa holster is a piece of junk. It causes malfunctions and it causes unsafe situations. Moreover, it's not a very durable holster. The reason most people get it is it's a cheap holster. And you don't need to cheap out on a piece of equipment that you're going to trust your life with. And in all of my years of teaching, I've had one participant do well with a Serpa holster, and that is because this individual is a firearms instructor and he has practiced thousands and thousands and thousands of draws with the Serpa. He understands it. He gets it. For the rest of us, we need something that's got a retention device that's a passive retention, no button to push or anything like that. And we need to go from there. Plus, there's always the videos of the guys shooting themselves with the Serpas and things like that. That should change your mind in a hurry. the next question and this was a really good question I appreciate this question a Patriot training alumnus said clay what is the purpose of zeroing the rifle in class shouldn't people come to class with a zeroed rifle in a perfect world the answer to that question would be yes people would come to class with a zeroed rifle however Patriot Training 
and I am proud to say this, we cater to the gateway student. Maybe it's this person's very first class. I have taught the first class of so many hundreds of people I can't even count. And that makes me, as a person, that honors me quite a bit. I'm very honored for that. Thank you to all of those of you who have trusted me with your firearms learning and trusted me with your spouse or your brother or your mother or father or your son or your daughter. We've had so many family members bring, bring people to learn how to shoot at Patriot Training. And I understand that that is quite a bit of trust that you put in me and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you. And so when it comes to zeroing a rifle, well the first thing you need to do to correctly zero the rifle is you must practice correct marksmanship. And if you're coming to me and this is your first class, there's a good chance you need some instruction on proper marksmanship. And you need to know how to hold the gun correctly. You need to know how to manipulate the trigger correctly. You need to know how to aim correctly. All these things. And we will walk you right through it, my friends. And versus a hasty zero that I see at some tactical school sometimes. Um, does it take a little longer? Yes. Yes, it does. And you know what? That's good. That's for you, my friends. That's to help make sure that your scope is in the right place, your red dot, what have you. I've seen so many optics come to class. You know, people bring their optic and their gun to class, and the optic's in the wrong spot. It's on the rail, or it's you know, it's it's not where it needs to be. And so we adjust the length of pull, and we adjust the eye relief, and things like that. And then we get that optic really dialed in and really zeroed at a given distance, so that the person will know where their bullet is striking. And so. Yes, the person should zero before, but yes, at the same time, we get so many people that either don't know how to do that or don't know how to do it properly that it's worth the extra time. And here's the fun thing. The experienced people, my folks who've been to four, five, six Patriot training classes, they never complain during the zeroing section, even if they're already zeroed. And woe be unto any Patriot training instructor who's decided to jump in on a class that might complain about the zeroing period that that would not end well i can promise you that <clears throat> so yeah you should come with a zeroed rifle if you know how and if you do if you're an experienced shooter and you come with a zeroed rifle and you confirm that it's zeroed early on i've got some exercises for you and some things that we can do to help you work on that while everybody else is is finishing out their zeros as well so we, we've got something for you I've got a backup plan it's not like it's got to be all cut and dried and cookie cut no we will adapt I have the ability to adapt the curriculum to people of different skill sets um, now for a class like for example essential sniper you really need to bring a zeroed rifle that's part of the prerequisites is to bring a zeroed rifle that's not an appropriate first class for anybody so you really need to have zeroed that out and taken some kind of a class prior somebody asked me one time they said what makes you qualified to teach military tactics and that's an excellent question for the sake of blunt clarity and complete transparency i have never been in any branch of the armed service i have never served i have never been a police officer of any sort nope i haven't done it those are not among my qualifications so what makes me qualified to teach military tactics nothing therefore I do not teach military tactics at Patriot Training. We do not teach military tactics. If you want to learn military tactics, go to the military or go to a school that specializes in teaching military tactics. There are opportunities for you. You're not going to learn military tactics here. What we teach are civilian tactics. And there is a difference. And make no mistake, that difference is very huge. It can be very, very similar. And it can be as wide as the Grand Canyon. And the reason why is because we as civilians have different rules and laws that we must abide by when we handle firearms, when we're involved in defensive shootings, etc. That 
just don't transfer over to military situations or police work. So no, we do not teach military tactics. We don't teach police tactics. We teach civilian tactics. And we teach those in the vast majority of our classes. And that's what you need to learn if you are a civilian. If you conceal carry every day or if you have a rifle for home defense, that's what you need to learn. Folks, that's going to do it for this video. We have covered all of the material that we needed to cover in that first Q&A session. If you've got additional Q&A, please send us an email. The email address can be found at our website, and our website will be noted in the description box below. And I would like to remind you that you do not have to be a patriot to train, but you do have to train to be a patriot. Take care.